Welcome to this snapshot, which focuses on video reflexive ethnography or VRE in healthcare improvement. I'm Siobhan McHugh and I currently work as a research fellow in the Yorkshire and Humber Patient Safety Translational Research Centre. I recently completed my PhD, which was an evaluation of VRE as a tool for the improvement of the multidisciplinary handover in acute maternity services. I hope this short session will provide some practical guidance on the use of VRE to affect change and improvement, but also the potential factors to consider when using this tool with healthcare teams. At the beginning of my PhD, I carried out a systematic review focusing on the impact of team reflexivity on teamwork and communication in interprofessional healthcare teams. The results of the systematic review suggested that VRE could be a successful tool for staff-led improvement. But when compared with the literature on collective debrief following simulation training, which is grounded in a wider body of empirical evidence, it was clear that the VRE literature was still in its infancy. I'm pleased to say that from that point to this, there is a rapidly growing body of healthcare literature in which VRE has been used as a tool for improvement. So this is a tool that's currently gaining real traction in healthcare. Rick Adema, Jessica Mesman and Catherine Carroll were the original protagonists of VRE as a tool to use video footage captured in situ to support healthcare staff to collectively negotiate otherwise habituated elements of their working practice and to articulate potential solutions for change and improvement. They propose VRE as being underpinned by four key principles. Collaboration between participants, but also between the facilitator, staff and the organisation. Care or psychological safety for participants. Exnovation, which is the concept of foregrounding otherwise taken as given or habituated practices and processes. And reflexivity which is the concept that shared deliberation about existing practices creates the possibility for new insights. The most common application of VRE has been within health services research projects. Specific examples range from improvement of infection control practices and the clinical handover like my PhD work, to understanding doctor-patient communication during consultations. However, VRE has also been employed, for example, in regional policy reform in Australia. And I'm currently doing some work with local maternity services to position VRE as a more rapid quality improvement tool. Video reflexive ethnography has four main stages. The first is a period of ethnographic observation to allow the facilitator time to familiarize themselves with the local context and with the potential staff and patient participants. The second stage is capturing real-time video footage in situ. In my PhD project, which focused on the clinical handover, I used a GoPro camera due to it being discreet and easy to mount in an appropriate place. These small action cameras are also discreet to wear if the process being captured is more dynamic. It is important at this stage to capture the process on a number of occasions, perhaps over one or two weeks, to allow for a better reflection of what normally happens. Following the filming, the footage is edited into short clips. It's useful to set out a framework which can be used to edit the footage. For example, I used the Oxford Non-Technical Skills Framework and the Handover Performance Tool to identify the key elements of teamwork and communication at the handover to capture in those clips. The final clips should total no more than around 10 minutes in length and should each be no more than two or three minutes long. Even the shortest clips prompt extensive discussion. The final stage is the reflexive feedback session. At this stage, participants in the filming process and their colleagues are invited to review the footage. This can be in one large group or a series of smaller groups where appropriate. The reflexive feedback sessions offer staff the opportunity to collectively identify the aspects of practice that have become habituated or even invisible, and to articulate and negotiate locally appropriate ideas for change and improvement. Each session should be led by an independent facilitator. Following the articulation of suggested process improvements, staff may start to make changes themselves, or support may be required to disseminate these suggested improvements to clinical leaders or organisational management. VRE should also be considered as an iterative process where filming can take place following any change or improvement 
to allow staff to understand the potential impact and to identify any further need for improvement. There are a number of contextual factors to consider prior to using VRE. At an organisational level, it's important that staff have the support and the capacity to participate, particularly in the reflexive feedback sessions. For example, I found that clinicians on the labour ward had dedicated teaching time, which I could use to conduct reflexive feedback sessions. But theatre staff and midwives didn't have this protected time. Equally, at a ground level, it's important to understand the culture of the staff teams involved. For example, some staff may be nervous about being filmed or, as in my experience, more junior staff might be less likely to initially understand the importance of their participation and engagement. It's also important to engage key staff early in the process so that they are able to champion VRE to their peers and explain in a locally appropriate way the benefits of participation. Core outcomes of VRE might be change or improvement of the particular process under scrutiny. The video footage also gives staff the time and space to develop a better understanding of the context in which they're working. And Labour Ward staff in my PhD project reported improvements in teamwork and communication because they'd been prompted to communicate in a different way in the reflexive feedback sessions. Examples of more distal outcomes could be exhaustive, but using my PhD work as an example, VRE prompted improvement in staff well-being and morale due to the staff feeling that they were given the autonomy to suggest and make change. And this then sparked ideas for further improvement within the team. To summarise, VRE can support teams to understand taken as given skills from a different perspective by asking them to collectively deliberate and articulate potential ideas for change and improvement. There are three key stages of VRE video ethnography, video editing, and reflexive feedback. Facilitators must take into account both organisational and ground level contextual factors when implementing VRE. And finally, the outcomes of VRE can range from prompting specific change and improvement to improvements in staff wellbeing, collaborative working practices, and improvements in the safety and quality of care. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any more questions or you would like to use VRE, um, please contact me by email or on Twitter. Um, my contact details are below.